friends and welcome back to our little mini backyard homestead. Today I thought I would do kind of like a little day in the life. We don't have a lot of stuff to do in the garden so I thought I would just take you along with me. Um, I'm making some bagels as you saw. I made the dough last night and I shaped them this morning. I've got my water here getting ready to boil and I'm still enjoying my coffee. Um, we're taking a trip to California later this week to visit my family so I wanted to bring some bagels. For that I need to go to the grocery store. I need to clean the chicken coop today. Got lots of chores to do. Also, Miles has a dentist appointment coming up soon, so I'm hoping the bagels will be done by the time we have to leave. We're kind of cutting it close. Um, but anyway, so I thought I would just take you along with me and kind of do these morning chores. We harvested a watermelon last night. Let me show you this giant watermelon. Look how giant, oh my goodness, this thing is. It is 36 inches round, and it probably weighs close to 30 pounds. We're gonna save this and bring this to my family's house this weekend because we're going to have 17 people and we figured we all can enjoy the watermelon together. And the dentist appointment, everything went well. Miles' teeth are healing nicely, so that was good to hear. So now we just got back from Walmart and Costco, so I'm gonna be putting these away because they cooled while we were gone. I'm not gonna show you a grocery haul because I literally just picked up a few of the things that we're gonna need for our trip. Faith's birthday is Saturday and she wanted enchiladas. So I got some of the homemade, or not homemade, sort of homemade, uncooked tortillas from Costco that we love to get because we're going to make green enchiladas with my salsa verde. So if you guys haven't seen that video of how to make salsa verde, I posted that I think last week. So I'll link that for you guys. Um, so I just got some of that and then some chicken thighs because that's what we're going to use for the meat for our enchiladas. And then the other thing we got for our trip, because it's like a nine hour drive, we got some of these, um, these are like healthy Pringles. I've never tried this brand before, but these are, you know, something that's really fun for in the car that you can just munch on, you know, as you're driving. And we always pack our lunches when we travel. So between that, and I also got some grapes at Costco, between the grapes and the chips, and then just some homemade sandwiches, we should be all set to go for our trip. I do still need to make some granola for everybody uh, while we're down there because we're gonna have granola for breakfast one day, we're gonna have our bagels for breakfast another day, and it is just about lunch time. So I would just eat one of these bagels for lunch, but these are for our trip. And I spent all this time working on these bagels. I don't wanna have to make more. Besides, I already put my sourdough in the fridge to rest in there while we're gone. I did get some of these Milton's Whole Grain English Muffins from Costco because I wanted to have them for lunch. So we're gonna eat these for lunch. We like to eat these with peanut butter and honey or toast them up and do like um, some turkey sandwich meat. So that's what's gonna be for lunch today. But look at these beautiful bagels. Aren't they gorgeous? I'm gonna stick these in the freezer because we don't need them till Saturday. Today's Monday and I want them to stay fresh. So the chicken's water tends to get some mildew built up, so I'm just going to use some eco-friendly soap. And I've got an old toothbrush that I'm just going to scrub and get all that clean.
So I'm gonna clean out the coop here. It's been quite a while since I've cleaned it out. I try to clean it out on a regular basis, but uh, it's been a while and our eggs are kind of dirty um, when they're, you know, their coop needs clean. Normally I don't wash our eggs. I just let them sit on the counter as long as they're clean. But lately I've been having to wash them just because the eggs are a little bit dirtier so they have to go straight in the fridge. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just scoop it out. I've got a bucket here and then this is just a little cat litter scoop that I bought at the Dollar Tree a long time ago. So we do have a hen in there laying an egg so we'll just kind of have to work around here until she's dead. This makes great compost for the garden. You do not want to put it directly on your garden because you'll burn your plants. It has to age a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump it in the compost bin. It's all nicely cleaned out. We've got Penny wanting to lay an egg, so I gotta hurry up here. I'm just gonna go ahead and fill it up with this poultry bedding. And you wanna make sure that you don't breathe in this stuff. So I was just holding my breath as I was scooping it out. Um, and I'll hold it as I dump it in. We've got clean nesting boxes now. One of our chickens sleeps in the nesting box. Junie is a little sulky because she can't get up on the roosting bars. So that's why there's a lot of poop in the nesting boxes. And then look at it, it's all nice and clean. Hi Milo, you gonna lay us an egg? All nice and clean. Now I need to get a rake and rake up this mess because the door kind of bows out a little bit um, and they just kind of kick and put this out all over the grass. So I'm gonna put that in my bucket. from all the chicken stuff. So I'm gonna be making some cupcakes for Faith's birthday. She wants chocolate cupcakes with pink frosting. And rather than just waiting until Saturday to make them, so I'm gonna just make them now. And then that way we can just stick them in the freezer and then thaw them the day of her party and frost them. So for the pink frosting, I don't like to use any kind of dye. So I got some freeze dried strawberries that I'm gonna mix in with the frosting to make it pink and also give it that strawberry flavor because she wants strawberry cupcakes. But she wants the cupcake base to be chocolate. Now I like to make everything as much as possible from scratch. So my normal cupcake recipe has lots of eggs and butter and they're kind of dense and heavy. They're delicious, but it's kind of a lot of work to make them. So I'm gonna be using this base. It's called a wacky cake. It doesn't have any eggs, not because we're for lacking for eggs. It's just, this is a very light, fluffy cupcake. Well, actually cake. We're gonna experiment and see if it even works with cupcakes. So I decided that we're gonna go ahead and make the recipe. Now it calls for two cups, whoa, I almost dropped my sugar. Two cups of sugar, but I'm gonna go ahead and do a cup and a half of sugar because with all the frosting, it does not need to be that sweet. I know box cakes are very, very cheap. I'm gonna use my Danish dough whisk that I just got recently to just kind of mix this together. And I think I need this in a bigger bowl. Hold on while I grab a bigger bowl. Okay, now we have plenty of room. And we're just gonna whisk this together. I know box cakes are super cheap, but just the ingredients in them are just not the best. And I just love to make everything from scratch. I already have all of these ingredients on hand, so that even saved me a couple dollars. So because there's no eggs in this recipe, you get the reaction of that rising from your vinegar and baking soda and all of that. So it's, it's a weird concept, a cake without eggs. But this is a really great recipe. I'm just gonna dump the rest of that salt in. This is a really great recipe if you have people with egg allergies or if you're running low on eggs. Wow, the kids are really having fun up there. And that is it for this recipe. So our dry ingredients are just water, oil, or our wet ingredients are water, oil, and vinegar. And then our dry ingredients are a little bit of sugar, flour, cocoa powder, salt, and baking soda. So now we're gonna mix this together and add that in and whisk it up. 
I've always dreamed of having my own cooking show. So cooking on here, talking through this, telling you how to do it, is like one of my dreams. Whoops, I just made a mess all over. Okay, I'm wondering if I did something wrong because it says the batter will be very thin and it is not very thin. I had two cups of water. See, this is why I should not have my own cooking show. It says batter will be very thin, but this is, and it said three cups of flour, and I even did less sugar. Hmm. I don't know. It's been a couple years since I've made this cake, so I don't really know. This is like really like thicker than muffin batter. Hmm. I followed all the ingredients. Well, I guess we'll bake it up and just see what happens. Oh, is this half time? Yep. Oh, I thought you were making the frosting. No, we're gonna make the frosting on Saturday. These are your chocolate cupcakes. Chocolate? Mm-hmm. So, I went back and watched the video and figured out what happened, and this is what happened. It calls for three cups of flour. I used the cup and a half to measure out, so I did four and a half cups of flour instead of three. So, I was debating whether or not to make another batch, but I did bake these up, and they're very dense. They're more like a muffin, and they're not very sweet, which is totally fine because you're going to have all the sugar frosting on here, and my kids really aren't used to sweet stuff, so it just tastes like a a sweeter chocolate muffin. I would not eat this and think, ooh, cupcake. This is more like a chocolate muffin. So I am going to salvage these. They're not that bad. They actually taste pretty good. So that uh, lesson learned. Make sure you get your measuring cups right. I am now working on the enchilada mixture. I'm not gonna show the whole process because this video is gonna be really long, but I'll put a link in the description box of the recipe that I use. It's an amazing recipe and it is so good. So basically I'm just browning my chicken thighs because they're all thawed now. And I'm gonna have to do this in several batches because I'm using my Dutch oven, which is what I usually use for sourdough bread. But I'm using it for this recipe because this, this is like the only other recipe that I use this for. So once these are done browning, then I'm gonna do some more seasonings and add my onions and just, it's really delicious. You guys have to try it. a lot of filling is simmering and I'm gonna go ahead and start on our dinner it is Monday so every single Monday we typically have a spaghetti it's just a brainless meal that I just throw together so I've got some leftover chopped orange pepper from the other day from the garden so I'm just gonna add this into my cast iron skillet with a little bit of olive oil and we are still getting zucchini and yellow squash from the garden so I'm gonna chop these up in little small pieces and I'm gonna go ahead and saute these for our spaghetti sauce. Putting zucchini and yellow squash in spaghetti is one of my favorite ways to use this up because you can cook it down and it almost disappears in the sauce. The kids don't even know it's in there. Well, I mean, they do know it's in there, but they don't mind it. So it's just really a great way to use up your squash and zucchini add some more chunkiness to your sauce to kind of stretch it a little bit further and some more nutrition and we can always find a few more things to do with zucchinis right we have so much zucchini gotta add it in everything for my sauce I have some spaghetti that did not seal so I'm gonna use some of this pasta sauce and then this one has a dent in the lid I don't know if it's sealed or not but as soon as I noticed that after I took it out of the canner once it cooled I just threw it in the refrigerator and I decided that I was gonna use it up. So it's only been in there for a couple days. So that is gonna be the base of our spaghetti sauce. Once my veggies are done sauteing, I'm gonna go ahead and add them to my sauce and start heating up my sauce. Technically, you're not supposed to do highly acidic things like tomato sauce in your cast iron skillet. So that's why I'm just using this to soften my veggies and then I'm gonna add it in here. I've got my water boiling and I'm gonna use some of my homemade bread to make some garlic toast. And that is what we're having for dinner tonight. Normally I also do some ground beef in here, but I forgot to thaw some. Uh, Cause normally I'll just have some already cooked up in the freezer. Uh, we had a whole chicken the other night for dinner. So I'm just gonna chop up a few of these pieces and stick this in here. Um, that way it'll just add a little bit more protein because meatless spaghetti doesn't really go that far for us. 
I know chicken spaghetti might sound weird, but if you chop up the pieces small, they just kind of melt in here a little bit. So the rest of this I'm going to use for tomorrow night. We're going to have chicken pot pie for dinner because we had a lot of broth from this whole chicken and that'll just be a really good way to use up this chicken. I am going to go ahead and add it into my cast iron skillet just so it gets hot. That way it'll, it won't take the sauce as long to warm up. All right, I'm just gonna put this sauce on low until our pasta is done. thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.